We are driving through Arizona in the United States of America. Land of sand, cacti, amazing natural sculptures, sand, the Grand Canyon. And did I say sand? Let's have a look at the majestic scenery. Have you heard of the Grand Canyon? Well, the Grand Canyon is a famous canyon formed by the Colorado River right here in Arizona. But not just that, the Grand Canyon is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Now, this is not just a small canyon. No, no, no. The Grand Canyon is massive. That's why it's called Grand. It is up to 446 kilometers long 29 kilometers wide and two kilometers from the bottom right to the top. Just think about how much chocolate milk you could fill in there. Mm. Did you know that for nearly two billion years the Colorado River has been using its power to cut away through the layers of rock and exposing lots of different rock layers from the Earth's history? Try and think of it as a big, and I mean big, birthday cake. Each different layer of the birthday cake equals a different time period. The layers down the bottom have been there longer, so they are older, and the ones at the top are newer. In the Grand Canyon, there are rock layers that range from 2 million years old to 2 billion years old. That is half as old as the world is itself. If you look at all the different layers in the Grand Canyon, it's kind of like it's telling us a story of the world's history. How cool is that? So I said earlier about the amazing natural sand sculptures here in Arizona. The reason why they all look like this is because of one word, erosion. Now the best way to explain what this is, is to picture that you're at the beach. Now you've just made a fantastic sandcastle, the best one yet. And then all of a sudden a wave comes and crashes down. When the wave is gone, the shape of your sandcastle is still there, but some of it's been taken away. And then another wave comes along and takes some of it away. And then another one comes along and takes some of it away. That's what's happened here. Water and wind has come and hit these rocks and each time it takes a little bit of it away. And that's what causes all these interesting curves all over the rocks. Water and wind can cause this to happen to rocks, mountains, and natural landscapes. Here in Arizona, there are so many beautiful sand sculptures that have been hit by water and wind over millions of years. Each time it comes, it takes away layers, and it leaves us with what we have here. But the main reason why we're here in Arizona is to look at a massive hole in the ground. I know, right now you're thinking, huh? What's she talking about? Let me show you. Look at this giant meteor crater. Can you tell how big that is? About 50,000 years ago, a piece of rock broke away from the asteroid belt and came zooming towards Earth. It was made of iron and nickel, and it was about 50 meters wide. It was traveling at 12.8 kilometers per second. That is a lot faster than you can go on the motorway. When it entered Earth's atmosphere, it became a humongous fireball right above America. Right above where we are, in fact. When it crashed into deserted land in Arizona, the impact was more powerful than any atomic bomb that has ever being created. There was plenty of dust all around and when it settled it made a crater that was one kilometer across and 230 meters deep. Right now I can see that you're staring at me with mouths wide open and lots of questions in your head. Don't worry this did not happen recently. It happened in the last ice age. When the meteor hit all of Arizona was covered in grass. There were forests of trees and the animals exploring were giant woolly mammoths and giant land sloths. 
it's a bit different to now. So yeah, it was a long time ago. Man, what's the speed limit here? Those cars are going so fast. But not fast enough if they wanted to be a meteor. When a meteor lives up in space, it's called a meteoroid. And they live in an asteroid belt, zooming round and round and round. But sometimes a small fragment or a piece flies away from its cousins and heads straight to Earth. We're good. Meteors can move up to 40,000 kilometers an hour when they enter the Earth's atmosphere. That's 400 times the speed that you can go on the motorway. Meteorites are meteors that have landed on Earth. They come in all different shapes and sizes. How often do you think these fall onto Earth? Well, these little bits are falling down next to us every day, even in your own back garden. Okay, so the things that you will need to catch your own meteorite are some white pieces of paper, a pen or pencil, a magnet, and some weights to keep the paper down. Then lastly, you need five safe places to keep your paper from getting wet. So this is how you do it. You take your five different pieces of paper and at the top, you write where you're gonna put each one. Make sure that the paper will be kept in an open area with nothing covering it, but also in a place that's not gonna to get too wet. Once you've put all your pieces of paper in your five different locations, you have to put weights down on the four corners so that it doesn't fly away. Then, all you have to do is wait. I suggest waiting one week. Then, once the whole week is finished, make sure no one has touched anything. Then you all need to go over to where the paper has been kept in your five different locations. Grab your magnet, and run it carefully over your white piece of paper. Then when you look at your magnet, you should see tiny little bits that kind of look like pepper. That is iron that has fallen down from the different meteorites. So there you go, you've all caught your own meteorites. But I'm not gonna tell you any more. I want you guys to go and try the experiment yourself. Have fun.